Franchise Committee for Monday, August 12, 2024. In accordance with Board Policy 8311, the chair of a committee at their discretion and after consultation with staff liaison may convene an in-person committee meeting. Otherwise, all committee meetings will be held electronically. Today's meeting is being held virtually and broadcast through Microsoft Teams. In order to conduct this meeting efficiently, all voting items this afternoon will be done by a roll call vote. Board committee members will say their names before making and seconding a motion, as well as when requesting discussion on an agenda item. Additionally, as a courtesy to the committee, I ask that you inform Ms. Faya or myself if you must leave the call by using the Teams chat feature so that a quorum may be maintained. Ms. Faya, please call the roll to determine the presence of a quorum of the committee. Thank you, Mr. Young. Ms. Lichter? Present. Ms. Soloski? Present. Mr. Young? Present. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Faya. Please call the role of staff members participating in today's meeting. Thank you, Mr. Young. Dr. DiDonato? Present. Dr. Grimm? Present. Mr. Hartloff? Present. Ms. Rayfield? Present. Dr. Elmendorf? Present. Ms. Myers? Ms. Becker? Present. Ms. Hetzler? Ms. Kerr? Present. Ms. Lazari? Present. Mr. Roberts? Present. Ms. Larson? Present. Mr. Salerno? Present. Mr. Rob Bertillon? Present. Thank you. If there are additional staff participating, please say your name now. Thank you, Mr. Young. Thank you, Ms. Faya. Mr. Hartlove, please state your name for the record and proceed with our first contract. Sure. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Chris Hartlove. I'm Chief Financial Officer for BCPS. First contract is uh, GDA-318-24, Interpreting Services for Deaf, Hard of Hearing Individuals. Um, this is a new contract for five years that takes us out to August 31st, 2029. Uh, the uh, maximum contract spending authority is $3,750,000. Uh, this contract will re provide for required interpreting services for deaf or hard of hearing students, parents, guardians, staff, and or other community members. Thank you. Are there any questions from committee members? If so, please state your name and question. Mr. Hartlove, if you could proceed with our next contract. Yes, uh, GDA-319-24, CTE Industry Recognized Certifications, Certiport. This is a um, new contract for five years, taking us through August 31st, 2029. This contract will provide CTE students a platform to engage in assessments that may lead to industry recognized certification. Uh, certification programs currently include Microsoft Office Specialists, Adobe Certified Professionals, Autodesk uh, Certified Users, um, and Cisco Certified Support Technicians. The maximum contract spending authority is $1 million. Are there any questions from committee members? Mr. Hartlove, you may proceed with our next contract. Yes, uh, ARA-203-22 Materials of Instruction Discount Program. Um, this is an extension, a contract extension, extension and a, an increase in the maximum contract spending authority. It's a one-year extension through August 21st, 2025. Approval is requested to extend the contract for one year and increase contract spending authority by $2,300,000, bringing the revised total contract spending authority to $6,135,000 with 16 awarded contractors, which are shown on page three of the exhibit. 
Are there any questions? Good afternoon. This is Mrs. Daleski. Please proceed, yes. Mrs. Daleski. Thank you. And thank you for the information. And um, my only question was if you can just you know, briefly summarize what type of educational resources this contract is for. And I know that the increase, if I read it correctly, was 2,300,000. So if you can just again, briefly summarize why that additional amount is needed. And thank you for answering my questions. Sure, I see uh, Dr. DiDonato and I know also Dr. Elmendorf are both, both here. I will turn it over to Dr. DiDonato. Sure, I can get started. And then, uh, Dr. Amendorf, please feel free to jump in. Um, so, Ms. Celeste, as you see, it is uh, numerous vendors. So, this is everything from um, Lakeshore, which we might get a uh, border for uh, bulletin boards from, to resources for school nurses, um, manipulative materials that might be used um, in math classes that are in addition to what um, our you know, curricular program uses. It might be used in after school programs. So where they might want to differentiate the type of supplemental materials that they're using as far as like manipulative type things. Um, art materials. So like Blick um, is where we get all of our paints, paint brushes, anything used in those art classes. So this is truly um, instructional materials that are more material based. Um, part of the increased spending is with the um, additional community schools and the number of after school and extended day opportunities for students. Um, those materials are used not just during a regular school day, but during extended day learning opportunities. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, thanks, Dr. DiDonato. I would just give um, a school based perspective if I could as a former principal, recent former principal, this was a critical contract type for me because it allowed me to purchase things at a discounted rate um, that I wouldn't I would have had to spend a lot more on if I hadn't had the leverage of the school system actually negotiating the contract like we did in this case. Um, so it was you know critical to be able to do some of those things that Dr. Giudinato mentioned as a school principal and not have to worry if there was a, a contract that really supported my purchases. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for that clarification because because it is very helpful to know that um, that the money is truly needed and being used. So thank you for that added clarification. Are there any additional questions? Thank you, Dr. Elmendor. Thank you, Dr. DiDonato. Dr. Grimm, if you could proceed with presenting our next contract. Yes, thank you. Good evening, Mr. Young, members of the board. Uh, exhibit number four is contract JHO 709 24 vehicle parts, materials, and fasteners. This contract will provide for vehicle parts, materials, equipment, tools, and fasteners to be used by staff for service and repair of various vehicles, trailers, and equipment. Are there any questions? Dr. Graham, if you could proceed with our next contract. Exhibit number five is contract DEI 617-24, PM and repair service for OFNS warehouse refrigeration. This contract provides preventive maintenance and repair services for food and nutrition services warehouse refrigeration system on a scheduled and as needed basis. Are there any questions? Dr. Grimm, if you could proceed with our next contract. Next contract is exhibit number six, contract DEI 613-24, provision of cookware detergents and cleaning agents. This contract provides safe and controlled cookware, detergents, and cleaning chemicals, as well as dispensing equipment and any necessary training for all kitchens under food and nutrition services staff. Are there any questions? Dr. Grimm, if you could proceed with uh, contract seven. Our next contract is MBU 505-20, maintenance and repair of food services mechanical equipment. 
This contract modification is requested for the continued maintenance and repair of food services mechanical equipment for food and nutrition services. Please note this contract modification will increase the spending authority for the remainder of the contract term, which expires on November 30th, 2024. Are there any questions? Dr. Graham, if you could proceed with our next contract. Our next contract, Exhibit 8, CWA 117-24, Bottled Water Services. This contract will provide bottled water services for BCPS schools and offices as facilitated through the Office of Facilities Operations and Logistics. This contract provides for the regularly scheduled delivery of bottled water, dispensers and coolers to participating schools and offices. As of July 2024, 87 BCPS schools required bottled water supply as a result of state testing. Detailed testing results are available on the BCPS website. Are there any questions? Dr. Grimm, if you could proceed with our next contract. Our next contract is exhibit number nine, contract DEI 614-24, Concrete and asphalt work. This contract provides for concrete and asphalt work, which includes repairs to sidewalks, ramps, curbs, bus loops, and parking lots. Are there any questions? Dr. Grimm, please proceed. Our next contract is exhibit number 10, contract MBU 524-19, playground equipment, outdoor fitness equipment, site accessories, surfacing, and related products and services. This contract modification provides for the continued purchase of playground equipment and services. Approval is requested to extend the contract for two years with one awarded vendor approved by the board on Tuesday, April 9th, 2019. This contract modification will exercise the second of two two-year extensions. Are there any questions? Dr. Grimm, if you could proceed with our next contract. Exhibit number 11 is contract MWE 805-25, Middle River Middle Limited Right of Entry Agreement. This limited right of entry agreement will allow Baltimore County to enter upon Board of Education of Baltimore County property known as Middle River Middle School located at 800 Middle River Road, Baltimore, Maryland 21220 to replace existing field lighting with LED lighting. Are there any questions? Dr. Grimm, proceed with the next one, please. Our next contract, exhibit number 12, is NTA 520-24, Ridgely Middle School Tennis and Basketball Multi-Course Courts Use uh, Improvements. This is a construction contract for which competitive bids were solicited for all labor, materials, and associated work required for the court improvements at Ridgely Middle School, including the plan replacement of deteriorated court surface, perimeter chain link fence, tennis posts, and basketball posts. Are there any questions? Dr. Graham, if you could please proceed. Our final exhibit, number 13 this evening, is for contract RBE 802-25, Northeast Area High School Site Approval. In 2020, the multi-year improvement plan for all schools, or my IPASS, was completed and provided prioritized recommendations for each school in BCPS. In September 2020, high school recommendations were presented to the board. A phase one study was initiated to evaluate options for providing capacity relief to high schools in the Northeast planning area. Lock Raven High School, located in the central planning area, was included in the study due to its immediate, immediate adjacency to the Northeast region. On November 22, 2022, the Phase 1 study results were presented to the board and recommended replacing Lock Raven High School to provide capacity relief to the Northeast region. The board requ requested an additional study of high schools in the Northeast planning region. 
The phase two study recommended the Overly High School site as an alternative to the Lock Raven High School site. From a professional architectural or engineering perspective, both Overly and Lock Raven High School sites are viable candidates for replacement high schools. From a community impact and equity perspective, the Overly High School site would result in fewer students needing to move to redistribute enrollment and reduce overcrowding in the region. This request of the board is to obtain approval to utilize the Overly High School site for the Northeast Area High School project. Are there any questions? Hi there, this is Mrs. Stolesky. Please proceed, Ms. Stolesky. Thank you. Um, and in reading the, the document, um, I just wanna thank you all for including the equity lens perspective as part of the study. And then um, in just understanding the, the impact part, um, it, it said that overly the impact would be um, less drastic because because fewer students would be moved um, compared to Lock Raven. Um, were there other considerations at this point of the study as well in terms of alleviating overcrowding or other impacts that were looked at? Or at this point in the study, it was just that initial part of the number of students that would be moved? Thank you. Thank you for your question, Ms. Stolesky. Um, and so the 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 overall study in, in both phases took a look at the facilities that currently exist in the Northeast region, as well as Lock Raven High School, as we said, which is really part of the, the central planning block um, to try to alleviate uh, general overcrowding in the Northeast area. And the, the first study, the phase one study, um, not only looked at overcrowding, but also looked at those equity and, and movement components. Um, it evaluates the, the, the property as it is um, to look at how much improvements would cost, the, the, the land. Um, all of those factors are, are uh, contribute to this. Um, the, the first study, again, came back with Lock Raven high, as the optimal site. Um, when we took the feedback from the board back, um, reevaluated, looked it over, um, we determined that Overly High would be just as good of a site, again, to reduce overcrowding in the area. Um, both sites have a number of, of uh, build, build uh, we'll call them construction challenges um, with how they're laid out on the property, the, the existing structures and where the new um, schools would need to go, what improvements would need to be made, and to accommodate the, the size for enrollment that we're projecting in the area over the next um, several years. So uh, those things were taken into account. Um, at the end of the day, both both schools or both recommendations, both the Lock Raven site and the Overly site, were very comparable. They they each have their their um, their their challenges as far as the sites are concerned. Uh, the reason why we are we are recommending Overly versus the Lock Raven site is because it would um, result in fewer students moving. So just to be clear, they were they were pretty equal. They're pretty neck and neck um, in terms of sites. But but for the, the reason to really distinguish them, it would just be that there would be fewer students that would have to move from the overly area um, if we were to build a new school there versus Lock Raven. That's very helpful. Thank you. You're welcome. Mr. Young, it's Ms. Lichter. I have a question also. Please proceed, Ms. Lichter. Um, and this is maybe a, a, just a new question, not a new question. I'm a new member of this committee. So why did this come to our committee if there's no fiscal implications? I don't understand why it's part of the contracts being presented to the, us as part of the contract committee. Yeah, so that's a good question. This is this is normal. Normally, um, what we do to inform the board of of how we'd like to move forward. In this in this case, um, you will be the board will be provided the plan for the state capital projects. 
um, at its meeting tomorrow night as at, at the initial information. And uh, this site is actually listed um, on those documents, which are, are currently publicly available, um, that show the, the Northeast Area High School. So it's really just for our approval to move forward and to begin to put a, um, a site and a place with a, pro with a project that you're going to see in other documentation in this case um, for the state capital budget moving forward. Um, so you'll see, you know, these kinds of things, the limited right away agreement. Um, you'll see when, when we when we bring information of our of our intent um, to engage in certain negotiations um, or to or to rename something. We often build those, bring those to building and contract. Um, certainly, if it's the board's preference for us to do that differently, we would do that. But that's it's more um, past practice than anything else, Ms. Lichter. And in this case, because it ties into the, the capital project. Um, Thank you. And then just and I may miss when you did your intro, but so is this going to be like a, a um, renovation of existing overly high or adding another school onto the property? It is a replacement. Okay, it is a replacement school, Ms. Okay. Lichter. So thank you for your question. So very similar to um, the current Lansdowne High project that is underway. Okay. Um, okay. It is comparable to the Delaney High School project, which is currently in um, in the design phase, and we ex we expect to begin to begin construction next year. So it is a it is a um, it is it would be a new school on the property. Okay. A replacement school. Yes, a right. Okay, so replace. Okay, replacement school. Right. Yes, so I just because that word isn't used in the document. So I, oh, there it is. A viable kind of replacements. Thank you for your clarification. Sorry You're about welcome. That. That's good. Are there any additional questions? If not, I will now entertain a motion to recommend that items one through thirteen be moved to the full board for approval. So move, Lichter. Second, Stolowski. The question is on the recommended approval of contracts one through 13 for board action. Those in favor, please say yes. Those opposed, please say no. Ms. Fayette, please call the roll. Thank you, Mr. Young. Ms. Lichter? Yes. Ms. Stolowski? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. There being three in the affirmative, the motion passes. Contracts one through 13 will be moved forward to the board. The last item on the agenda is announcements. The next building and contracts committee meeting will be held Monday, September 9th, 2024 at 5 p.m. Is there any further business? Hearing none, the meeting is now adjourned. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks.